okay And tried to steal my hope away They crucified my precious Lord Left him to die alone and scorn Though they tried to keep him in the ground No power on earth to keep my Savior down He is alive, hallelujah And the stone is rolled away He is alive, he is alive, hallelujah He is alive, hallelujah And the stone is rolled away Staggered up that hill He carried my own cross as well And on that cross he took my shame He bore my sin and freed my name And though they tried to keep him in the ground No power on earth to keep my Savior down Take my life, a living sacrifice. I'll always live my life for you. And I surrender now before your name I bow. I'll always live my life for you. So Jesus, take my life, a living sacrifice. I'll always live my life. Keep him in the ground. The soldiers tried to keep him in the ground. Even the religious people tried to keep him in the ground. Nothing's changed. But I'm out on earth to keep my savior down. He's alive, hallelujah. And the stone is rolled away. He is alive, he is alive, <coughs> hallelujah. Well, hallelujah. Welcome this morning to our Easter Sunday online church as a Chunga Uniting Church. Great that you could join us uh, wherever you are joining us from this morning. And there's something that we do on Easter Sunday, and we can still do that here. Sophia is going to help me out. I say, he is risen, and you say, he is risen indeed. So can we do that? He is risen. He is risen indeed. Fantastic. Great that you can be with us. This is our Easter uh, weekend. It's a big weekend in the midst of everything that's going on, but this is a season of hope, a day of hope and celebration. So uh, we're going to begin that by singing together the hymn, Christ the Lord is Risen Today. Sophia is going to help me out with some hallelujahs, so I invite you to join us as we sing. Christ the Lord is risen today, hallelujah. Let the whole creation say, Hallelujah. Raise your joys and triumphs high, Hallelujah. Sing now, heaven and earth reply, Hallelujah. Love's redeeming work is done. 
today it's a day to celebrate now we're a part of the Easter story and the events of the past week have been stories that have been significant stories leading up to what we celebrate today and I know some of the children have been working on some projects through the week and that have told this story so let's just watch and see a few of those that the children have prepared using Lego bricks and other means during this week And these are all the palm tree branches, and here's the tree, but the tree does extend up as well. Um, and here's the back palm tree branch, and then we bye! Thank you to all our children and families for engaging with that and for being creative as you've shared those stories. I hope you've enjoyed the uh, children's packs and the activities that Michelle has sent home this week to keep you occupied during school holidays and over the Easter weekend. Just a reminder too that you can continue week by week to engage with some activities online. Michelle has prepared a page on Sway. Uh, which includes some videos and some teaching, some songs and activities that you can do in the place of Kids Church Sunday by Sunday. So if you head to our church website on the activities page, you'll be able to find a link to that. Now we know there's different elements to the Easter story and uh, Sophia, you've got something here that's keeping you warm at the moment. Another Easter <laughs> feature that, uh, that often appears around the place. Tell us who this is. Violet. Violet. So it's not the Easter Bunny. No, not the Easter Bunny. Uh, what about this one? 
Seen those a bit around the place? Yeah. And uh, you're likely to have also seen uh, these around. Perhaps yeah. yours are a little bit more shiny and silvery and colourful at the moment. Uh, now, Sophia, do you know what all of this has to do with Easter? Why do we have hot cross buns? Because, um, because it's the cross in the middle is the cross that Jesus is to remind us that Jesus died on the cross and he, to save our sins. That's it. That's and a good answer. Yes. Yep. Excellent. All right. And what about uh, eggs? Um, what do they have to do with it? We. Um, That's a trickier one, isn't it? What about rabbits? <laughs> That's okay. Well, they're you know what? Cute, that they're cute. They are cute. <laughs> and and uh, chocolate is yummy. Yummy. The reason we have eggs, chocolate eggs, but often it used to be just ordinary eggs. And the reason we have rabbits is because they are signs of new life. Just like these beautiful flowers behind me. Signs of new life in spring. And Easter is a time of celebrating new life. As Jesus rose from the dead, it was new life. Just like an egg represents new life. Rabbits, as we know, represent lots of new life at times. And we've also got the significance of the hot cross bun. So as you get stuck into those eggs today, uh, kids and big kids, uh, a reminder that it reminds us of new life. And for those with the chocolate ones, it's also empty, which reminds us of the empty tomb that Jesus has risen again. So thank you, Sophia, and thank you, Violet. We're going to now watch a clip that reminds us of this Easter story in its context. the story of how God so loved the world that he gave to all of us his only son Jesus grew into a man, he healed the sick he loved the lonely he gave God's love away to everyone Jesus gave it all the people followed him they'd never seen that kind of love, he loved no matter what they've done But not everyone was happy Some of them were jealous so They made plans to kill God's only son Jesus gave it all And one night while he was praying Some soldiers came to find him They took him to their rooms Who didn't know just what to do they asked the people gathered just what they should do with him. The crowds crucify him, though he did nothing wrong. Jesus gave it all. And the soldiers tried to break him. The crowds, they mocked and scorned. They led him up a hill called Calvary. And they nailed him to a cross. Till he asked God to forgive them They didn't understand That it was all for you and me Jesus gave it all Jesus said he is finished Then he took his final breath And the sky grew black as midnight And the earth began to shake And the crowd began to tremble They shook their heads and wondered And the soul I know that this man was the son of God Jesus gave it all And they took him off the cross They placed him in a tomb They rolled a large round stone In the doorway of the cave Some soldiers they stood watching Making sure no one could enter Jesus' friends were sad and hopeless as they all went home that day Jesus gave it all On the morning of the third day His mother Mary came to see him To make his body ready For the grave where he would lay But the tomb 
it was empty An angel came to tell her he's not here He's risen, see the stone's been rolled away Jesus gave it all Jesus gave it all Jesus gave it all Yes, Jesus gave it all. There is so much to be thankful for on this day, on this weekend, in the midst of of this crisis. So I invite you to join me as we simply pray uh, things that we are thankful for. And again, if you're doing this live, you might like to contribute some of these points so that others can uh, see them on the chat uh, as we go. Let's pray and give thanks. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for who you are. We thank you that you did give it all over this Easter weekend. We thank you that you gave your life for us so that we could live and experience freedom and forgiveness and grace and life in its fullness. We thank you for the life of Jesus, for his death, but also for his resurrection today and the promise that comes with that. You are all powerful and all knowing and all wonderful. And so we thank you for who you are. We thank you too, Father, for what you have done and for the things that we are sharing and have shared that we are thankful for. We thank you for the safety of our homes. We thank you for opportunities to connect like this. We thank you for, in our state, the threat of this virus uh, seems to have been reduced. There are so many things that we take for granted, but we thank you. Thank you for the blessing of where we live, for all you've done for us. Amen. You would have seen, uh, hopefully on email, that we we believe prayer is incredibly important. And in this season, we are so aware that across our world and even in the midst of us, amongst your lives, There are uh, things you're grappling with that are difficult, that are hard. Business issues, health issues, things that uh, are in need of hope. And so we are calling the church to prayer uh, next Saturday, or this coming Saturday, as an opportunity to gather from dawn till dusk. At some point during the day, you're invited to engage with that. Perhaps on the hour, every hour. Perhaps it will be at a set time. Find some way that you can connect with that. But we're calling us to pray. Not just for us and our needs, but for our world where there are many who are simply not coping with the change in the uncertainty of this time. These are dark times, but we bring light in the darkness. Prayer is a powerful weapon. So we can be mobilized to be praying for our neighbors to be praying for each other. And so we're calling you to pray next Saturday. If you didn't receive details, please contact me and we'll make sure that they get them to you. As another way of hope, Valerie, as she shared last week, has been sharing on Facebook and now we're offering on email some daily focuses of prayer points to give you a specific focus for the day to pray into our world and the needs that are around us at this time. If you'd like to join that list or if you're not on Facebook, again, please contact us. We would love to have you praying with us and allowing you to have a focus. Prayer is a powerful weapon. And so we come now to a time of praying for others and those needs. And let's admit the the needs are phenomenal at the moment. They are different. For some, life goes on relatively normally. But for others, there are significant pressures that compounded in many cases. So will you join me in praying for our community, for our nation, for our world? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that you are here and that you hear us. So we come to you knowing that you are our provider, that you are all-powerful and all-knowing, 
that for all the good that we can do, you can take that and multiply it. There are things that only you can do. So we come to you in desperation on behalf of our neighbours, on behalf of our nation, on behalf of our world amongst the, the deep needs that we're experiencing. Father, I lift up to you those amongst us, those in our contacts who are in need of your healing hand at this time. Strengthen them. We speak healing to their bodies and to the sicknesses and to all of the things that are, are dragging them down. May they be healed in Jesus' name. We pray for those and, and lift up those who are losing hope, who are feeling pressure, who are, are wondering if there's a way out of this current crisis. You are the light of the world. We pray that you'd bring hope and light into the darkness. Protect them, we pray. Father, we pray for our leaders, for our Prime Minister Scott Morrison, for our state leaders and our local government leaders. As they navigate this crisis and make decisions, we pray that you continue to give them wisdom, that you'd uphold them, you'd give them strength and protect them from all of the criticisms and many things that could come against them and bring them down. Thank you for them. We pray, God, for our world for places who seem to have it far worse than we do here in South Australia. We pray that you protect people from succumbing to this virus. We pray that the virus would stop. And we pray that you would use all that's happened across the world over these last few months to see new life come out the other end. Bring about good as only you can through this tragedy. Father, we pray for those who are continuing to work, for doctors and nurses, for school teachers preparing to go back next term, for police officers who are being confronted with the needs and the challenges that people are faced being isolated at this time. Strengthen them, protect them, bless them. Thank you, Father. We offer these prayers because it's the least that we can do, but because you can and are able to answer them. So we stand in the gap and thank you that you bring about answers as we do. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Mark chapter 16, verses 1 to 8. The Resurrection. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they may go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on the way to the tomb, and they asked each other, Who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. This is the word of God. What a story, eh? Well, I wear my special hoodie today, Don't Lose Hope. Uh, these are uh, positive t-shirts that are produced by a friend of mine and uh, I've worn this and I've got a shirt with it I know some of you have seen me with this and it always starts a conversation and the reason I wear this today is because this really is the message of this season and certainly the message 
of today. The Easter story is a reminder not to lose hope. We've been reading through the Gospel of Mark since Christmas and we reach its conclusion today. And as you do, I want you to put yourself in the place of the disciples. Who would have thought for them that just a few days ago, as they watched Jesus arrested, beaten, crucified, who would have thought then that there was any hope? Jesus was dead. Death is fairly final. Sure, Jesus had had given them some warning about this in subtle ways, and, and they had seen him do some incredible things, but the reality is that the disciples were human after all. Jesus was gone, their leader, all of the hype and the celebration, the palm branches, gone, finished. Friday was a very dark day in the lives of the disciples. Like a bushfire having just ravaged through a reason. Hope had been shattered, and as they looked around, they would have been in such grief and despair. Now on Saturday, it had started to sink in a little more. Three women had brought spices after sunset, after the Sabbath had ended. These were followers of Jesus who had watched Jesus' burial and his crucifixion. They were there after the men had fled. Where were the men? We're not told. The fact that Mark names these as eyewitnesses backs up the validity of this story and this text from Mark. The Jewish law didn't even accept women as witnesses in their legal proceedings. So why would they be included here by name unless this account were true? Now the spices they brought were to anoint Jesus' body. Not to embalm him and preserve the body like the Egyptians had the practice of doing, but as a way of honouring the person. And let's be honest, it was there to mask the smell as well. Because the Sabbath day had just passed, and during that whole period they hadn't been able to come and do this. So what these women would now encounter wasn't going to be all that pleasant after a good day and a half. But this morning... The first day of their working week after the Sabbath, the unexpected happened. At first light, these devoted women head to the tomb. Unsure how they'll move the massive stone, in their grief, they didn't even have a plan. And as they approach the tomb, they realise that the stone has been rolled to the side. And they see a man there who tells them that Jesus is not there, that he's risen and that they can go and find him. Now let's just pause for a moment. That must have taken a little bit of time to sink in and to realise. Mark's account ends abruptly with the women saying nothing out of fear. Note that we don't even get to see Jesus here in Mark's version of the story. Now scholars uh, disagree on why this is. Some think it's deliberate that it forces us to wallow in our questions and our uncertainty. Others believe that the ending of this manuscript was perhaps lost or damaged. And so while if your Bible has some extra verses, you'll note that these verses are not included in the earliest manuscripts. They're likely to be, have been added later by one of, of those copying the manuscripts and perhaps drawing on Matthew and Luke and other sources to bring this to a satisfying conclusion. But regardless of how this is presented, as we draw on the other accounts, as we put ourselves into that moment, who would have imagined that the events of Sunday morning, Jesus being alive, could have happened after the events of Friday? Out of that darkness, out of that despair, out of that lack of hope, suddenly Jesus is alive. Who would have expected that to be? Whatever they questions they had, they now had their hopes realized. This Jesus who they had followed, who they had believed in, who they believed was the Messiah, the chosen and anointed one. 
was now not dead as they'd been wallowing in the last few days. It was not over. Death was not final. Jesus had come back from the dead. He was alive. Even death had been defeated. This is incredible, an incredible story of hope. This is the God that we serve. A resurrection God. At the beginning of the Gospel of John, Jesus is introduced as the Word. It says that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made, without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. And then it says, The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. What a beautiful picture. Darkness, we we know what that feels like. We know to some extent what it's like to have our emotions clouded and to lose hope. But the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Jesus today, let's let this sink in, rose from the dead. The women that morning went expecting to uh, approach a, a, a smelly body, death, and instead they found an empty tomb. Jesus was, is alive. Incredible. Jesus has power over death. When Jesus appears to John in the book of Revelation at the start, Revelation 1, 17 and 18 says this, When I saw him, I fell at his feet as if I were dead. But he laid his right hand on me and he said, Don't be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I died, but look. I am alive forever and ever. I hold the keys of death and the grave. How amazing is that? They are words of hope and promise. We don't serve a God who we pay lip service to, who's there when we need him. We always need him. There is always hope. He holds the keys of death and the grave. How incredible is that? So don't lose hope. That is the Easter message for you and for all of us. It's a message whatever our circumstances, particularly right now. To those that are living with sickness, don't lose hope. Jesus has the power to overcome. To those in business who are finding the pressures just too much at the moment. Who are uncertain how you're going to make ends meet. Where things have been turned on your head. Don't lose hope. We serve a God who takes a deep interest in your lives. He never said it would be easy, but he is with you. To those who are lamenting the loss of freedom. Who've had to cancel plans. Don't lose hope. To the lonely, the fearful, the uncertain, don't lose hope. To those of us aware of our friends and our neighbours who are in dark places, don't lose hope. Jesus, the light of the world, lives in and through you. We are vessels of that light, that hope. If we can hold on to it, We can continue to be a light to the world in this dark time for many. This is our time to shine. Light. Light in the darkness. That is who we are. That is what we become. With Jesus living in us. Don't lose hope. We are a people of the resurrection. We are a people 
who don't serve a God who died on a cross and that was the end. We are a people who serve a living, risen Saviour. Christ crucified, but Christ who is alive again. He is living and we can pray and seek Him, not because He's distant or far, but because He is living and He is all-powerful. Don't lose hope. The words of the song, Because He Lives, powerful words, especially the chorus. So I invite you, as a way of a statement of faith, a statement of hope and proclamation, to sing these words with me, unaccompanied. Because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Because He lives, all fear is gone. Because I know He holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives. Will you sing with me? Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know He holds the future And life is worth the living Just because He lives Heavenly Father, we thank You for this day of hope As we go back to our circumstances back into a, a week of uncertainty as we talk to our friends and neighbours and in the darkness that they feel we thank you that you are light and that we bring light as we do we thank you for the resurrection and the hope that comes with that help us hold on to that hope today and each day in jesus name amen well, as we go into this week, may we continue to be a people of the light. This is our time to shine. It is a catchy phrase, but it is the truth. If we can't shine in the midst of this, for all that is happening to us, then when can we? So go with God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit with you each step of the way. Don't forget, too, to remain generous. And in your weekly offerings, continue to give to the church, but also a reminder of our special offering as a way of blessing the wider work of the church in the world through Uniting World. You can give to the Lent Event Appeal. There are ways that you can do that online. Simply head to lentevent.com. Let's stay generous. God is with us and continue to shine His light. Don't lose hope. Let's shine that. Amen.